are live. All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Dojo. Today, we are going to be doing the, the, the follow up, the second part to our. Oh, crap. I hit myself. Sorry. Yeah. Um, we're going to be doing the second part to the one beginner's guide that we started last week. And we're going to be covering. Um, whilst last week we covered basic game mechanics of combat and team fighting, so 1v1s and, and team fighting, today we're going to be moving on from what you do in, as in the combat and onto why you do it, as in the game modes. So we're going to be talking about the two main team game modes. Um, first off, Dominion, and then if we have time, um, and energy, we will cover, we'll talk about Breach a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. Dominion, in particular, is the most popular mode in the game. It's the primary team mode, and Breach is considered less less um, competitive, but is uh, still quite a popular mode. So we'll start off with some Dominion. So Natara and I are going to set up a... Natara's with me today, by the way. I forgot to introduce him. Yep, hi, yeah. You all know me. Hello. Uh, so thanks very much for, for helping with all that. Um, so we will start off with setting up a custom Dominion. Um, oh, we probably want to have like the default settings, by the way, for... Oh, Renown as well? Yep. Oh, oh, I left my control unplugged. Oh, oh. Works. Ow. It is going to please work. It. Oh, it, no, it didn't. Great. Right, my, it's not protecting my controller. I had it unplugged because of things. Oh dear. I'll do some mouse and keyboard. It's fine. Won't expect me to be doing much usefulness. Okay. Um, Any characters? Go to use... Pardon? Any character picks? We should go. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, Hello. You can go however you want. I'm going to go Medjay because he's new. Okay, so Dominion. What is it? Well, Dominion is a we're demonstrating it right today with a in a one v one. But normally, as you know, it is a four v four mode, um, which is the I guess the premier main mode of For Honor, um, and it is a an area control mode or point control mode. You might might be known as um, and what. And it's sort of a hybrid between that and Team Deathmatch. Because you do get points for killing your opponents. And you, to, to win the game, you have to, have to kill all your opponents. But um, that's not the primary objective. So, as we can see, we're going to... You can see on the start of the map, there are three points A, B, and C on the radar. You can see them um, highlighted, I guess, on the screen. And they have 100 points standing underneath them. And if you go and capture one of these zones, they're called, you will gain... Oh, I'll let you capture it. Um, you will gain 100, what they call, soft points for your team. See here. See now on the scoreboard, up in the top left and top right. Natal's uh, team has now got 100 points, and it's flashing plus two, which is the score you get for boosting the zone, for being inside the zone. If Natal pops out of the zone, that'll go down to plus one, which is actually slightly more than half of plus two. It's a little bit con confusing, but um, it will also continue to generate points. If I go in and capture the zone myself as the, the defender, you'll see that his points have stopped going up, and then it's going to me, my team, and now we have the, those soft points they're called have gone to my team, but the points that were generated by um, by the zone itself are stayed for the Natal's score. Um, and now you can see that well, if we go into it, the plus two from my um, 
the boosting is gone. We are now this zone is being contested, and it's not generating any points for either team. But of course, the soft points are still on my team. Um, we can go over to the mid lane. As you notice, there's a, there's a B. Point B has turned blue. Well, it might, uh, I guess it'll be orange on your screen. And this is the minion lane. So this zone, there are two capture zones, A and C, which work as described. And there are also these, the minion lane. The minion lane is not captured directly by any hero who you can play. It's captured by these minions, or soldiers they're called in the game. Um, everybody likes to call them the minions because they're little. And they're annoying. Um, and every time you kill one of them, you also increase your hard score. So each point, you see Mattel's killing them, he's getting, it's, it'll say like plus one times 12, or plus one times 20 for as many points as he, as many minions as he's killing and something like that. Who's joined? Is that Freeze there? Yes. Hello. Hello, Freeze. We have Freeze as well now. Um, to remind me in case I said anything wrong. <laughs> um, nope, that's not correct so far. Oh, perfect. <laughs> um, <laughs> enjoying some chat things. As you can see, the points gained from mid lane, as well as the points you get from killing the minions themselves, you also get plus two per second, which is the same as boosting a point. So if you have both side points, if I go and run up and grab A now, even though I will have an advantage in soft points, in hard points, that my my will be, um, team will be generating the same amount of hard points as just having the minion lane. So, you so in many ways the minion lane is the most important one because it it guarantees you points and it and it will carry on earning points at a high rate even if I'm in front of it fighting around it. You, like just me being here doesn't stop it earning points, even though I'm in the in the middle of killing your minions. And Nutella can fight me and will be able to. I uh, will still be generating points. So the mid lane is very important for point generation. And it also. You can get points from the minions. Killing the minions themselves, as you mentioned. So. Uh, yeah, it's a bit like uh, the minion lane in a moment. So, what uh, last other bits is when we get to 1000 points, it, the team deathmatch aspect will really come into play. And. When you get to 1,000 points, you can no longer respawn if you die. Your team is, called, is breaking, and then if then the if one team is breaking, when everybody is killed, they you will um, that'll be the end of the game, and, and the uh, team that left with all players alive at the end wins. So you have to get to 1,000 points by capture territory capture essentially, and what themselves doing right now, which is all cabbage farming, um, and by also by killing a killing opponents. So you won't be able to see, but if Intella kills me, um and he'll probably get I think it's five points per player kill. Yep, five points. Yeah, five points. So this is another reason why uh, minion clearing minions are very important because well uh you get as many points for killing an opponent as you do for killing five minions. And Pretty easy to kill five minions. You can often do it with a single hit, which is more than you can say for most opponents. So, uh, next, well, we know we talked a little bit about uh, about the score and how you get the score. Let's talk about some problem, some common mistakes that people do. Well, first, obviously, the, I think the biggest one players tend to do is ignore the mid, 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 minion lane. Um, as we've covered, it generates a lot of points on its own, and it's hard to stop point generation although it is potentially the easiest to uh, switch over sides if you're in a situation where your opponents have all of the points which I will try and do now have all the capture zones the minion lane the mid lane is always the one you want to go for first because it's really hard to lane. stop a cap it, of the mid lane yeah like, it's you can you can kill the minions and and take them and stop the minion lane being active, and it's the only one you can get without having to kill. If somebody's, if somebody's, if I'm defending, if I'm uh, attacking a tell, I haven't got mouse and keyboard on, so I'm not used to playing mouse and keyboard. Um, I've forgotten. That. I don't have the button to faint. Um, but this is the only one that I can grab and defend and tell. I, tell I, I can't, I can't even dodge now. Ha! 
But as you can see, this entire time I was fighting, I still had the mini lane and it didn't go until Nutella cleared, um, cleared the minions. It's the one you can, you can capture without killing your opponent. So that is a good reason to have it. Ignoring the mini lane is definitely the number one mistake that new players make. Um, because, well, to be honest, it is a little bit boring to go and kill kill minions. But you're not fighting dudes. They're also but really unfun in design. Like, they interrupt your yeah, execution. A little bit, yeah. They body they... block you. It's not the most enjoyable thing to fight in minions, yeah. but they are the easiest way to win. If you didn't notice, I kept up with this point generation of two different points by just farming mid. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, number one thing to do, make sure your team has the mid lane. And in competitive matches, you'll see often tournament stuff that players, that teams will just ignore one of the points and, and solely focus on holding um, a minion lane. What the minion lanes can do that, uh, what the minion lane can't do is heal you. Um, and if you don't have, if you've lost health from being attacked by opponents or from firing wins yourself, uh, so you can tell can go and heal himself in the point that he owns. And whilst you're doing that, you are boosting your point. And here we run on to the second big common mistake that players make, which is boosting a point all game. They will sit on that point and, well, look at you, you're, you're stopping the opponents having it. You are generating extra score, plus, plus two instead of plus one. What's, to, what's not to like? Well, the problem is, if you are sitting on your home point, uh, a point all the time, and just just staying there, not your opponent, for teammates uh, yeah, like not that. playing in the rest. Of the, you're you're essentially leaving the rest of the map to be a three v four. And as we've discussed, the mid lane is the most important point in the game, generates the highest score. If you're leaving a 3v4 in the rest of the map, well, then your opponents are going to be able to capture, probably the capture the other capture zone and the mid lane without being contested. And then they will, you will, attend, you tend to loot, you end up at the top of the scoreboard because you've been sitting in your home point boosting all game, but you will normally cost, cost your team the game. So do not, this is, I guess, number two, mistake that players make new players make is boosting all game just don't do it yeah um, you don't when get you have any more health, points really? for having two people boosting nothing yeah. like that like one person is only needed at a point and even then sometimes you might want to leave it unintended yeah you, you, so yeah it is better if everybody's fighting in the mid lane and nobody's going to come and capture your point it's better to leave your point and go and help win that fight in the mid lane, and then your your friend, your allies can come and heal back when they when they need to. Or you rotate out when one of your allies is low health, they come in to heal, and you go out to take their place in the fight in the middle. Yeah. So I think that is one of the most complicated things for people, knowing when you can disengage from a fight and yeah. swap out with a teammate that was on the point. So you, people tend to fight till the death. I will yes. not. I will not run away. And other people will say, "You coward! You run away." But strategically, it's fine to retreat, heal up, rejoin the fight. And which team can do that more optimally has a big advantage because they will boost a point all the time just because someone has to heal. And if you have to heal, you can just stand on the point, right? And your teammates can fight all the time. And if you rotate people in and out of that fight then you're optimally using the overall health of your team and will most likely win at the end. Absolutely. And actually, that brings me um, back to something I forgot to mention at the beginning, which is... Uh, I'm going to... Uh, please, I'll send you this thing so you can got the the, the, uh, the curriculum to follow along, is that this is a team mode. Honor does not mean shit. The game is for honor, not with honor. You will not, your teammates will not thank you for allowing them to have a, uh, an honourable 1v1. You will just get rotated on and you'll be ganked. It, and you don't have to fight. Every fight is not an honourable fight to the death. 
you will your teammates will thank you if you follow if you have good tactics and retreat when it's optimal to do so so yes uh, i i sorry sorry i didn't mention that one at the start but really uh it's it's not for honor it's fuck honor play to win because it's just more fun winning and it's and whilst it might be more fun in the moment to do something that's oh i feel honorable it's not as fun for the rest of your team to be having them uh, to be hampered by their allies intentionally throwing the game it's, nobody likes that so uh, definitely that's a, a don't do it if you want to have an honorable 1v1 go play the dueling mode if you want to have an honorable 2v2 go play the brawling mode um if you want to have a team fight and you want to have if you want to play the dominion mode play it properly basically yeah. um all right well let's uh fit whilst here we can demonstrate what happens when you're breaking well, um, I had no more respawns left because well, I was above the uh, thousand points limit. Nutella wins the game. Well, here. Um, a little caveat about boosting as well. If you are boosting a point, you are actually spawn more minions for the enemy team. Uh, this is both a good and bad thing. It means your mid laner can farm more. But at the same time, it also does mean that the mid lane will get automatically cleared if you don't have a mid laner. So always keep that yeah. in mind. So that's another reason why you shouldn't be always boosting a point regardless, because you will then give yourself, your team, a disadvantage in the all-important mid lane. So, yeah. Um, point number three for what is the worst uh, common mistakes that players make? I guess we can um, start up another one when you're ready. Inviting freeze if you're on the game. Oh, oh yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Oh, um, no, I, just, I just asked for it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, in that case, I'm going to quickly Oops. jump out and get reinvited so my controller will work and I don't have to be playing with a mouse and keyboard. Yeah. Um, I think I just started the... a peer to peer an accident. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Uh, player yeah. you're trying to group with is unavailable. That's a new one. Yeah, that's just because I was in the process of starting. There you go. Oh, okay. oh sorry. Um... Um... Whenever you're ready. Um, well, yeah. Okay, so I guess whilst we've just said uh, don't boost all game, don't boost without thinking, what we're going to say now sort of sounds like it's a contract uh, in direct yeah. conflict with that, which is the number three mistake that every team, that ev lots of new players leave, and you see this a lot in matchmaking, even up to you know, good levels of matchmaking, is leaving points unguarded. And I don't necessarily mean having you know uh, somebody on the point boosting it, but rather leaving your point in a situation, your capture zone in a situation where an enemy can come onto it and take it without being having anybody there to defend it or or stop them from doing that. Yeah, you can um, see people always call. Did you just donate that point? Yeah. When you listen to comms or listen to streamers, so they call it donating a point. Yeah, leaving it open and letting players, letting your opponents just walk onto it, is another way to throw a game. And I have seen many games where what happens is the the player who's um, He's keen to get into combat. He sees there's some ruckus going down in the mid lane or in some other point. Runs over there because he's currently standing on the mid on boosting, and it's not that super fun to be standing boosting. And lets your enemy waltz in, and then as you know, that takes they if they capture a point, they gain 100 soft points. So you can um, now sprint to unlock is on control as well. Sorry, I saw Twitch chat there. Um, Uh, and then they let the unbreak and come back from certain defeat. So yeah. the 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 coral, yeah, don't leave points unguarded. Um, yeah. And again, I think it's something. Um, sorry to interrupt. Uh, you it's on. something that gets better over time. Once you have teammates that disengage and come to heal, you also don't sit on the point that long. So you get to fight as well. And you know when you yeah. come back that person's also going to rotate out again. So you're never bored 
on the point and get the yeah. urge to just run away and donate that point because you you want to fight too because that is a natural instinct basically you yeah, yeah. you want to play the game and playing the game doesn't mean just sit there absolutely um no you're, you're completely okay. right the better so you the better you get the more tactical understanding your team has and the more that is applied the less you will also get bored and just want to fight just because it's yeah. going to happen naturally the fights will yeah. progress as you want them to yeah. yeah, you also need to know why you're leaving a point. If you're leaving a point just to help your team, but someone's just respawned, probably not the best idea because they can just steal yes. it from right under you. So exactly, you to... that is a good idea to yeah. keep an eye on the top. Yeah, is someone dead? When exactly. is, are they going to respawn? How long will it take for that person to arrive back at that point? So... Yeah, you need to know yep. where your I... enemies are and if they're respawning, if they're going to respawn, where their next rotate will be. G-Trap from Shaolin is a really good tool to figure out opponents for that. But not every character has G-Trap, obviously. And you can't just crouch in one feet. Yeah. So I guess that is the uh, the fundamental way to avoid having your, your leaving your zones unguarded is to know where your opponents are all the time. And a good way, a good rule of thumb, which I follow in, it doesn't it doesn't just happen in a in in communicating teams, but even when you're playing on your own, is don't leave a point if you don't know where all the opponents are. So you can see on the um, we'll let we'll, me get into that. You'll see, you obviously you can see the status of every player. You can see if they're dead. You can see if they're executed, which which is a skull instead of a little plus with a circle on it, which means they're going to be dead for a bit longer. You can see if they're flashing red, means they're at low health, which normally means they're in combat. You can see where, even if your teammate's not communicating with you, you can see if a point is being contested, because you can see it's not gaining the plus two, the plus one, plus two. You can see if an enemy's boosting a point, because you will see they have plus two on one of their points. So you can quite easily work out where everybody is on the map from... A looking, obviously that's quite an important part of it, and B looking at the the UI that gives you inf extra information. So right now, I can I'm up on point A. I can see that there's nobody in mid. Um, I see Wiz being boosted. I'm looking around, and I can't see anybody around. I can see Freeze leaving C. I can see somebody's legs on A. So I now I know where everybody is. You know. And it's just from the start, from, look, from looking at the scoreboard and looking at, um, obviously looking at the map and looking around, look around you. So, yeah. And now I can know, well, I can't, I can see where Freeze is, so I could come down and engage him there, but I, Nutella would be able to come up and get me, uh, get the point without being contested. Or I can wait here, more likely Freeze is going to come and run onto the point and fight me. Um, and probably win because I'm trying to talk and fight at the same time. <laughs> Um, oh, I can add a fourth thing to that, uh, to the, uh, list of things not to do. Don't run into ganks. Unless you really, really, really need to for a good reason. So, let's say we're in this situation. I am just coming off spawn. There's mid lane is over there. It's, it'll suit, goes to the enemy. Uh, C is uncontested. I can see plus one. And I've just been killed on A by Freeze Nutella who ganked me. Well, my instinct is to want revenge and run in to take my vengeance on the two of them. But running into a gank is a terrible idea because you are in a disadvantaged situation. It's very easy for people to set up ganks if they know what they're doing. And even if they don't know what they're doing, it's pretty hard. It's pretty easy to for people to, to you to die in a in a one in a two v one because defending against multiple people is harder. You get revenge once, that's great. You can attack whilst you've got revenge, but when your revenge ends, you're gonna die. That's a pretty standard thing to happen in a in a gang situation. So don't if you can avoid it, and you almost you almost always can because unless all of your team is dead at the same time. You won't. There will be somewhere you can go on the map where you do not have a numbers disadvantage. So go there. 
because that's better. Even if, even if your whole team is is dead, it's better to wait around for the rest of your team to respawn so you can all go together and not be outnumbered to start off with and come in instead of two players at full health to fight a 2v2 on a point, you have one player at half health and another player at full health. And you're basically one, one and a half players against two players, which is, again, very much suboptimal. So don't do that, um, I guess, would be the, the, the fourth big no-no of, of uh, Dominion strategy. Um, okay. I think I've... Do you want, guys want to add to that one? Um, um, a little point about Dominion strategy. If you and two people are coming off spawn, you might both want to go to that point just quickly cap it before they can get back to it. Because cap speeds increase with the more people you send to a point. And it is usually yes. beneficial to try to steal a point and then leave one person there rather than rotate with one person going to a team fight if you know you can probably get, steal it from the enemy team. Yeah. But that is a bit of a so if I, yeah, strategy. Yeah. Yeah, no, not very much so. If, if the opponents leave the point open, then, you know, that's a good place to go and, and grab it. And then don't just leave it open again and immediately go to the next place. Um, the next bit I want to talk about is, we, is revives and executions. As you saw earlier, um, when I was dead, I wasn't executed. And I had a little health bar. We'll, we'll, we'll do this over here on this point here. I will... Um, I'm just going to yeet Nutella off the edge. He's going to very... He falls my faint to guard break. And goes and dies. And as you can see now, he's got a 12 second respawn timer. But if Freeze runs down there, he can go and revive him. I mean, standing by the corpse. And holds the interact button until... For some... I think it's four seconds. And then Nutella comes back. Now, you can see Nutella came back at half health. And this is an, an, a really good example of what happened just there is a really good example of when not to revive. Because yes. Freeze ran off a point, leaving it to me, and went to go and pick up Nutella when Nutella was just about to end his respawn timer. So instead of coming back with full health, he sacrificed a point and now has his ally at half health. And Nutella now needs to go to their point to go and heal. So, you will often see people going for revives, and sometimes a revive can seem like a really good objective to go for, but oftentimes it really isn't. And knowing when to revive is a pretty vital part of the game that a lot of players get wrong. Um, we are now in a situation where it's always good to revive, which is when you're breaking, although it's also better to, you know, if I were, if I had an ally now dead on uh, in the mid lane, well, I could go and revive him and fight my fight my opponents, or I could run to C point, capture C point, and give my ally an automatic respawn because now we're not breaking anymore. So that's another thing to think about when you're um, looking to, res to respawn an ally is you can you re you can revive allies more effectively by rescuing yourself from your team from breaking. So. That should be your number one priority, not going for re revives, especially if you've got nowhere to heal. What so would you say? How many revives are bad usually? Eight out of ten? Honestly, yeah. honestly yeah. even more. Eight, Nine out of ten. Yeah. The, the only good revives are revives where you're in breaking and you literally couldn't get a revive, or no, 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 it's no, a, re say that. Or if, if you just... a revive where uh, oh. you've got like. Okay. Yeah, there's one more case. It's a revive where you've got a team fight and you could really, really use an extra bit of HP to finish the team fight up in your favor. Thank you for watching. Uh, yeah, that. I think if you just won a fight on a point, just got the point, the person yeah. can be revived. That depends. And just so take the, the take the, the free renown. Yeah. Because uh, with current yeah, CCU and people rotating in, it's really easy to respawn after being revived like that and being on half HP or... 70% HP when you could have just respawned around there and had the same. Yeah, but yeah. if the other people can oh, leave them, exactly. Crashed. Um, okay. Oh, if the other people oh, can uh, leave the point and uh, you boost it. While it is free renown, though. Yeah, that is true. And um, it is free renown. No. But 
However, we will indeed renounce our next topic. Um, we'll have to do when Nutella gets back from being in the crash zone. Um, but whilst we're on the topic of uh, revives, I guess we quickly point out, you'll have seen it before, we've talked about executions a little bit. If you kill an opponent with a heavy, you can finish them off with an execution, which prevents them from being revived and gives you back some health. So, in general, executions are a good thing to go for. Um, the only times you really don't want to go for executions is when you're in the middle of a team fight, and it put, putting you executing would make you vulnerable uh, to being attacked by another opponent. In fact, that's I guess that could even be a fifth thing that lots of players do, which is to say, go for every execution when it often is better to just let the ex let the opponent. Don't bother with the execution. Don't go for the extra health, especially if you've already got at full health or near enough full health, because the amount you can lose from putting yourself in a really long, vulnerable animation of an execution is much more than the amount you can gain often. Um, yeah. Also so you can start out. within lock uh, and out of yeah. lock from execution yeah, and yeah. short, quick kill time. We, we have indeed time, uh, is... done an entire two hour episode on executions only. So you can look at the, the Discord, the YouTube channel to, to if you really want to get in depth on executions. I don't want to go too in, in deep on it now. Ideally, go for a like fast driving, one that kills are... quickly. Yeah, you want a fast one that kills quickly. Um, and uh, one that heals you a lot, but also kills as quickly as possible. But in general, uh, if you want to see more about executions, go to that point. Um, but yeah, you want to go for executions when you won't get interrupted. And that's it, really. Um, sometimes it's even better if your opponents are super revive happy to leave an ex leave somebody who's, who's able to be revived, but not executed, just to distract people. Um, if they are making bad yeah. decisions and going for the wrong revives in a long time. To elaborate a little bit on that, because you want to use your time in a match efficiently, right? So if you're being revived, you have to run all the way back to your home point. Wait there, heal up, then rejoin the fight. I can add up to a minute quite yeah. easily. And being out of the, the game, basically, for a whole minute can mean a lot. You can do a lot against three people in a minute if you fall, right? So the yeah. more efficiently you use your time, the better. And that's basically why we also said... A lot of revives are bad. Yes. That's why so, the re refuse revive button is a really good tool. Yes. And sadly, yeah. a lot of people will get angry because they have revive orders. Yeah. So yeah. you're a bit of a conundrum there. Uh, yeah. And that doesn't actually exist in Breach because Breach used to have tickets. So, yes. Yeah. Well, you, cannot re you can still not no, refuse you a revive. You cannot refuse breach. revive on Breach. So oh. you can be revived at, at like. Underneath the ram, and get instantly rolled while standing up for twenty more seconds. Good uh, we will definitely breach has uh, several, many issues, and we will get into that yeah. if we get onto breach. But the next thing is something that I want to mention, which is which Freeze mentioned when he's talking about free renown. Is renown? What is renown? Well, um, let me know, so when you when you're uh, back we are in love, and I've invited you. All right. Uh, just because you play, I've got the uh, um, much more overlays. Um, well, what is renown? <laughs> renown is essentially if you're, if you can think of the team score as the, as the the thing you see on the top. Renown is oh, I don't mind having we can have bots on if you want. Um, no. Renown is your individual score, how well you are doing as a player, and. You get it for doing pretty much everything in 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 the match. So, killing minions, killing players, capturing points, boosting points, defending points, reviving allies, executing opponents gives you a little bit of renown, I think, as well. Um, being on kill streaks gives you more renown for killing opponents. Is there any other source of renown I'm forgetting now? Uh, uh, we yeah. lost a lot of sources for it with the removal of all the snowflake buffs. Yeah, there uh, were a lot of weird, weird buffs. Anymore, in fact. Uh, they don't? Okay, no, alright. They were one of them. Uh, comeback yeah. is one, and kill streak ending is another. Yeah, so if you, if you kill somebody who's on a kill streak, 
or if you get your first kill after dying three times, I think, you get a little bonus renown. Um, uh, note that but... there is first kill and not first uh, takedown. So yes, you can, take down. You oh, can technically go without getting a kill three times, but you've got like seven takedowns and you can still get the comeback. Yeah, sure. so takedowns are essentially your kills and assists combined yep. and kills just to the ones you land the finishing blow on the opponent. Um, so, well, that's why people get a little bit annoyed if you steal their kill. Um, not only they can stop can stop them executing if they needed the health, it gives them a little bit of... You, you've to taken a bit of their renown. Um, assist tags, you just get a little bit of extra renown for some, uh, if you help kill somebody. Um, they last quite a long time, so you don't have to worry too much about feeding revenge, as we talked about in the last episode. Um, and you can still get an assist for it. Um, but what does Renown do? Other than your personal score, and a little, and you can see where you are on the scoreboard, who's doing the best. Well, Renown is how you unlock your feats. So, let's see that bar down left-hand corner, which I don't have anything for at the moment, but Nutella is slowly gaining on, and I guess if you kill me, you will get some more. There we go. Emote spamming is one of the only things that doesn't give you renown, actually. Um, it's highly effective, though. It is very highly effective. Oh, we took, oh, oh, we've got that execution respawn penalty. If you're executed, not only can you not be revived, it takes three seconds longer to respawn, so... Another good reason to execute if you can. Anyway, as you are doing things, you will gain renown and you will unlock your feats. You have four feats um, in, well, in increasing order of difficulty to unlock. They need Each one needs higher and higher score. And when you do, they essentially are powers, little um, buffs that will active they can be they can be passive ones which just give you a buff for doing whatever action so Nutella's got a body count on which is a passive tier one feat that gives him a little bit of health and stamina for killing opponents uh, for killing minions sorry I have now got my tier one which is an also a passive freeze has got his tier one is an active one which he can activate by using the d-pad or the number button number buttons and it's called rush and it allows him to run faster. I just did that. Um, tier two, and it is arrow strike. Yeah. Arrow strike. Uh -huh. so and landing. you can see them by looking at a player. Yeah. You can if you look at Nutella. Oh no! If you look at we're looking at other way around. Nutella's we're looking, looking at, at people. Yeah, we can see yeah. his tier one yeah. feet. His tier one feet, which is currently is white, which means. Yeah. And but if Nutella looks at me, stop it. Stop. Oh, sorry. Stop. My oh. mine is currently white, but if I activate it, it turns grey, yep. which means it is on cooldown. Yes, and you can also see that he has a little <coughs> buff, little icon above his health bar, which will be the tell you the effect that the, the player is currently under. And if I kill freeze in my staff form, I will gain a little shield because I have now activated my tier one feat that gives me a shield. Um, after I kill somebody, and you can see that from my glowing shoulders and also the little shield icon above my health bar. So, um, yeah. Feats are incredibly important in a game. They are a little bit of a win more mechanic, so the better you're doing, the more likely you are to get your renown, the more quickly you will get your feats, the bigger the benefit you will have from your feats, and whilst your Tier 1 and Tier 2 feats aren't as powerful necessarily. Your Tier 3s and Tier 4s can be very, very powerful. And some of them can be pretty much game-winning on their own. Stuff like Fire Flask, when combined with a damage-buffing feat like Fury, can be a is, can be can can win a team fight at a critical point in when you're breaking. Something like Phalanx that gives you everybody on your, on your team and the entire map a shield can save people from being killed and, again, turn a critical team fight. Feats and when to use them are incredibly important in um, in deciding in the matches. outcome. In all, in all matches, in a yeah. breach as well. But particularly in Dominion where there are fewer opportunities to use feats. What Nutella just did then is 
a great example of a wasted feat because he did some damage onto me, but I immediately healed it back up because I'm on an un uh, uncontested point. And his feet is on cooldown, so he has got to wait for longer before he can use it again. There we go. This is another example of a feet wastage. It was... I was able to heal the damage over time um, from the fire trap immediately. As soon as I'm on a friendly point, it will cleanse damage over time. Um, you do not want to be wasting your, your tier 4 feet oh. because the cooldown for those are 3 minutes. Uh, normally, and the match doesn't last... A, you're probably not going to get it until six minutes in, and B, the match is only going to last another five minutes from that. So you're only going to really... Often will only get one use out of your Tier 4. If you can manage to get two uses out of your Tier 4, and you can get your Tier 4 really early in the game because you did a good kill streak or you've killed a lot of minions very quickly, then it is a good idea to use your Tier 4 early. But other than that, it's a good idea to save feats for critical points. You have to be wary to not save them for next match because obviously you can't take them with you. Um, yeah. you don't I think that's to... not to be understated. Yeah. yeah. Do not just sit do on not your feet. Do not hold on to them, but do use Yeah, them. especially tier ones, tier yeah. twos. If you have active feet, just Common use them. Most JJ really, it, it, make it's yeah. as just not using their feet despite you know their tier one, tier two being available for the majority of the game. And at the end of the game, you just see them pop their tier two into tier one, even though it's the same buff and the yeah. stack. Things like yeah. Jung Jun, for example, having active tier ones and tier twos usually, yeah, and really yeah. short cooldowns. Or if you play Zerko or Shaman with the traps, just use them liberally. Don't yeah. don't fret too much if you oh I placed it wrong. It doesn't really matter. Just keep using them. The chance is yeah. still there. Someone to step in or something. Just don't sit on them. Uh, that's a very good point. Um, we talk about feats being powerful, but they're only powerful if you actually use them. And whilst you don't want to waste your tier 4 feat that you're only going to get really once, you can get multiple uses out of your tier 2s and tier 3s. So there's really no reason to to sit on them and, and waste them. If you think about it in terms of how often you... how much value you get from them, uh, even if you use two, a feat like slightly suboptimally, you use it optimally once versus using it twice sub slightly less optimally, you actually get more value out of using it twice. So more use you can get of your feats in general the better. Um but do be careful not to waste the the big ones when you when you need them. Um Yeah, like my tier four can completely deny his access to minion lane to unbreak himself. Yeah. yeah, so that's a very valuable way of using it. But ways I see people waste tier fours is using them when they're in fights that before they're breaking. So often you get them in just before opponents are breaking in a, in a fight that's not actually go on an on an objective. So fighting if you're you know on the side on the side not on a side point or down like over here on the stairs where I am, th those tend to be pretty bad uses of your tier. F of your tier four, um, you although they can be good uses of tier threes if they if they give you extra survival, let you win win that fight that you would have otherwise died. Um, so when to use feats really is a sub subsection, and you will get a feel for this as as you play the game and, and improve. But it's a subsection of an overall game sense, and this is definitely going beyond sort of the very basics. Um, but it's good to have, I think, these concepts available so that when you reach a level where you're able to make use of them, you know what place things to be starting to look for. So efficient and valuable use of your feats is certainly one of them that's quite difficult to get to, um, to get, a, get a grip of. But another one we've which we, I guess we can, is, is related to that, is, is seeing the, ma the map as not just you and your teammates running around and fighting, but seeing it as a battle for resources and a way of using your resources. So um, things like... Uh, I mean, I guess it, it's, it can be similar to, uh, a, in a real-time strategy game, or a MOBA, your health is a resource you can spend 
to make to do something you know as even any any fight you're, you're very unlikely to go into a fight and win it without losing any health so you should always consider your health as a, a, a meter of how much fighting you can get done before you uh, need to go and heal you have things like your positioning on the map if you're have two players together next to each other then they aren't spread across the map they might be wasting their resources essentially by having fewer bodies available um, I guess this is an example of having two people boosting all two people boosting at once is definitely throwing the map because you've got two people not only have you got one person who's probably doing boosting when he doesn't need to but two people boosting is concentrating your resources where you cannot get a lot of use out of it, out of them. Um, ganking is a good way to m have efficient usage of your resources if you can keep your opponent, if you can kill your opponent quickly by ganking efficiently with an ally, then you will be getting, you'll be removing your opponent's resources without using too much of your own resources in terms of health. Um, anything you guys want to add on to this concept of resources? Or is it I mean, you can add a lot to that, but yeah. I think it's too long. Whether your time is a resource, your health is a resource, your feats are a big resource. So if you manage to bait out the tier four and that one doesn't kill you and you just trade health and a little bit of time for healing, that is definitely worth it. So yeah. You can always I mean, if you do ask yourself, was it worth it what I just did or not? Was the trade of my resource worth against the trade of their of their yeah. resource? So and sometimes so it's guess, debatable. So Yeah, very much so. And this is where where it becomes um a uh, very much a grey area instead of we've we've cut we've we've left the common mistakes that everybody agrees are big do big no nos onto what you should be doing, and that's a much more difficult question to answer in general because yeah. there's a lot more nuance to to what you can and can't do um i think we've mentioned this before but when you talk about maximizing resources maximizing your time in general it is better to not die <laughs> good advice to live by but you if you can if you even going from a fight where where you've been a, if you have to go to the home point and heal it will be faster to go and heal from almost dead to full than it is to respawn so not every fight is a fight to the death and i think that is another thing that players beginning early in the game start starting off with struggle with um and learning when discretion is the better part of valor is definitely something that is um, an important thing to do in the game. Don't worry about being told a cow being called a coward for running away. It is something you definitely should be doing if it's beneficial to your team to do so. Um, there are times when you don't. What are times are times when you don't want to run away? You do want to fight to the death. What do you guys say? Well, uh, when it's the point that I'll get them unbroken, for example. You want to just stay there and fight until you possibly can not. Like, yeah. if it's going to unbreak Sometimes... them, your life is worth nothing at that point. You need to stall out until your teammates get there. So they're still breaking. Yeah. Uh, other Sometimes points... it's worth it to stall out yeah. till the bitter end. Yeah, other times when it's like you've got three enemies on you, you're not going to run away. There's no real chance of it. So it's better to just stall. And now you've got three people on you. You're likely going to get revenge a lot because three people and you're just gonna sit there and waste three people's time your team have an easy time of three of you wanting the rest of the map uh yep. it, it's circumstance and not really something you can determine so easily but just you get a feel for it but ideally it's just am i making the other team suffer more by just wasting my own time and that's basically what you need to do um, Sounds like Freeze is going to link that for me because no, I'm just going to mod Jones. Oh, <laughs> yeah, <that'd be> <laughs> yeah. 
Um, yeah, I think, are you in mod now? Try. I didn't get a message for whatever reason. Uh, I don't, uh, He's well, a um, now. He's a mod now. He is? Okay. So other times where it is good to fight to the death, I think, is if you're defending a point um, against one or multiple opponents. It, I think it's personally better to try and stay alive for as long as, po as possible because you're going to be keeping them from getting um, building up a score. So... Oh, sorry, I'm just you also thinking. need to be really sure that if you do try to run away, your opponents can't just catch up to you and now give you an out of luck punish. For example, yes, in this that's... scenario, I'd run away from a BP, sure. The BP can't really run away from me. Um, yeah. I'll just do a dash full heavy and now I get a punish on him because he tried to run. So it also is dependent. Some opponents will not let you run away oh, in the first place and you'll be a free kill. Yeah, yeah so that's another will, big probably, thing. Yeah. You yeah. will never yeah. run away from a shaman. You will never yeah. get away from a shaolin. A major but well, if, a, if a conqueror chases you, you can like just run a little him and then keep running and you still <laughs> get away. Yeah. So um, there's a big so discrepancy. Yeah. Knowing points. When you actually can leave to go and heal is a big, another big, um, I guess, knowledge. knowledge is a bit of a knowledge check, knowing the capacity of your opponent. But also, you can use it to your advantage. So, something like, if you're in a 1v1 and you manage to get an out of stamina punish on your, your opponent puts themselves out of stamina, or you bash them, bash them out of stamina or something like that. They... Well, now I could pressure Nutella and try and knock him over. Or I could use the opportunity to run away. Well, I can't anymore because Freezer's there. But an out of yeah, stamina punish nice. is. Uh, yeah. An out of stamina. If you, opponent, if you get your opponent out of stamina, it's often a good idea to. You, you can use that as an opportunity to run away instead of having to pressure them. And if you, especially if you, if you think overall you're in a weaker position and you can. You could, in theory, turn that fight around. But. It might be even better if you could go and use that opportunity to heal up and not have to turn that fight around and get an advantage later on. Um, another thing that's difficult for people people to do is uh, using. I guess we can do a little do a little example here. When I'm I've got freeze really low health, and freeze wants to go away and heal. So what Nutella can come and do is come and pin me down, and now I have to. I'm forced to engage Nutella, otherwise I'll die. And Freeze has used the opportunity to go and let him let his go and get a heal. So that's another thing that is often a good thing to do. If you're running into an to if you have somebody run up an ally run to you to finger quotes help, well, a if they don't know what they're doing, they're likely going to feed revenge, and b use that opportunity to disengage and heal if that's if you think that's a better choice um and often it is a better choice especially if your opponent doesn't know how to gank uh, your ally doesn't know how to gank if you do know how to gank then maybe it's better to go and um to gank do a quick gank in a 2v1 but in a team fight it's hard to pull off ganks um and it's often better to go and use the opportunity to heal and this map here with uh, temple garden very often plays out like that you have one team that's on C point. Everybody's fighting over mid, and the the the, poop, the team that's got C point will come and fight mid, and then allow their allies to come out, rotate out, and heal. Um, by well, I guess they call it is is a form of peeling for your allies to let them move around. Um, it's yeah. so sad that we instill into new players straight away. Your teammates are most likely going to be useless. So you gotta do this or that. Yeah, no, it is. It is sad. Um, I, mean, I guess. I mean, it's the like truth. That. I'm not. I'm yeah. not denying it. I'm not denying it. With regards Trying to locking down someone, it is very yeah. bare bones and simple because you can't dodge forward to get out of a mix up or anything. So they literally can't follow you. They could only external side dodge towards you, maybe. But for the most part, a bash or a heavy towards someone will lock them down. And it's really easy to peel. So. Yeah. Even though your teammates are bad, the bare bones of pinning down someone is really easy. And they'll yeah. even do it an accident. Yeah, and I think that's a... I think a way to do it is to assume your teammates are not going to be good. Um, but give them the opportunity to... Don't mess things up for them if they are going to be good. And 
try and exploit their bad behaviour um, to your advantage. Um, so, other things you can do, to, as well as allowing yourself, your allies, opportunities to go and heal, are protecting them their heals when they have them. Uh, so let's say if you guys come over to where to my my end of C. Um, so it's a different way different way around. We've had a team fight on mid. Um, Nutella is very low on health. Freezer's got much more health. Um, and you've both come in. You've both come in to C to heal, but I'm coming off respawn and I'm going to come into this point. Freeze is going to engage me off the point to allow Nutella time to, to make the most of his thing and heal. And I can't really get into the point to stop the healing because Freeze is going to be using that. Oh, so good. <laughs> <laughs> Freeze is going to, well, Freeze, as Freeze did very well demonstrate what, what players often call playing connector or uh, I think it's just easier to, 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 Think of it as, as as intercepting opponents to allow your friends to heal. So, don't if you're sitting on a point and there's two of you there, one of you is healing, and you can see an opponent's running in. It's often beneficial to engage them outside the point, so they have to come in to stop you healing, and that also gives you an ad a positional advantage because then they will want to get onto the point. They have an objective other than fighting you, something else that's yeah. on their mind, and it's going to allow you to get in more damage, which so, also makes them very predictable. Because yeah. they will want yeah. to go on there. So maybe they even unlock and you get a bigger punish. Or the person healing just sits there and waits for that other person because he's most likely going to do some forward dodge move towards him, right? Yeah, exactly. Which so, is you know, an, an easy parry. Absolutely. Um, you know, worst thing they can do is they can they can you know, roll to try and get in. And why am I roll buffing not working? <laughs> There we go. And when you put yourself out of lock, you are easy. You get staggered for longer, so you can get you can um, get worse punishes. So, um, oh, if you guys kill me, kill me here. Because um, oh, the next thing I want to demonstrate is the <laughs> <laughs> the next thing I want to demonstrate is the corollary to what I said earlier about running in and. Uh, running into ganks being a bad idea. Running into ganks expecting to win is almost certainly not a good idea and is very likely to fail. But if you go, sometimes you need to go into a point, to a gank, to stop them, stop your teammate from your team from breaking. So if I go onto this point here, I'm going to roll in, and now my my objective is not to kill Freeze and Nutella. It's to survive for as long as possible. Oh, like yeah, that blocks down, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow, nice. I'm probably not going to do a very good job of surviving for as long as possible. We're doing a really bad job ganking. <laughs> That's I'm doing a bad job. Fusion. It's the biggest window out there. Yep, yep. Your moment. If your teammate is a Yorm, just give up, though, to be honest, because they're really bad. <laughs> yeah. It's like doing top heavy, but it's so um, slow. I, I forgot how slow the top heavy was. Yeah. But you can see what I did then wasn't really. I mean, I, I actually kind of messed up a few times and went oh, for throws like top heavies. Um, oh, nice! You're a zombie yom. Yeah. But what I went for there was obviously just not an exa a good example without team without teammates. But I went in to stall to Wait, stop the end of the game. Yeah, obviously at the end of the game it's a little bit trickier. But sometimes it's a it is generally a bad idea to run into a gank. But sometimes you want to run into a gank to give your team a breather to keep the enemy the two enemies you have. Or two or more enemies occupied for longer, again, pinning down more of the opponent's resources to allow the rest of your team to do something useful. Um, and I would like to say I did a very good job of doing that in the um, Warriors Den live stream that we were on uh, in the last match. Even though I died a lot, I died a lot on points and I stalled and stopped the event enemy from gaining points, and that's why we won, and it's entirely me. 
and I'm a good player. See, yeah. if you ask Nutella, he's going to say something <laughs> different. Oh. He's going to tell you he had a, a weird-ass teammate jumping down from ledges he shouldn't have. I had three weird-ass teammates doing it, and only one of them got a jump tag. <laughs> Thank you, Norgos, for actually landing it. Well, he landed it. Norgos oh, landed it, but you two, the other two, didn't. Oh. Yeah. Be, then Norgos also failed another jump attack. Yeah, then he, then he kept trying, and he failed another one. Yeah. <laughs> Just to add more salt to injury. I guess that's another another point. Don't... Uh, drop attacks. They're very risky. Um, be Especially on Overwatch, they... because the map doesn't Depends work. Depends on the ledge. I mean, Overwatch especially, the map literally doesn't work. So... Yeah. Oh, I guess that's right. Yeah. Be wary of ledges. Um, yeah, know your maps and such. Yeah. Some ledges are very bad to drop from and expect a plunge. Some ledges are amazing because you barely take any damage for failing a plunge in the first place. Yes. Uh, um, so because a plunge, no matter, yeah, no matter the height, will always be 2,000 damage if it connects. So yeah, that's well, death yeah, for anyone. I don't. I, you still can't live through that. We've tried before. Yeah, there's no way to to live through a plunge, even if. Uh, well, I guess if you landed on someone doing a flip in the middle of the flipping, that would that would also work. I mean, it's a bit sure. weird. It has a hundred percent damage reduction. So, but that's a pretty unusual scenario. Um. So yeah, drop dax. Got to be careful of those. Um, I guess the last point which I wanted to cover on Dominion, obviously we can we can uh that was Freeze getting a getting water. He's he's a he's a hydro homie. Um The last point, because we could we could talk about Dominion tactics for hours and in and indeed we have in the past. Something that I guess I would like to cover briefly is playing with a team that you're communicating with is almost always more fun and much more effective than playing with randoms that you can't communicate with. But communicating effectively itself is something is just having a team doesn't mean you will be communicating effectively and communicating effectively itself can be challenging and is a skill that needs to be learned. So things like I personally think things like giving your allies more in, as much information that they can't get is really helpful. So say, okay, I've I've got uh, the opponent Ibushi coming up ladder to, to me on A. Um, opponent Yorm going to C. We're losing mid, that kind of thing. Telling a, saying, okay, I'm in a fight that I'm going to lose. Don't bother coming to help me. Or I'm in a fight that I'm going to win. Um, you can come and, and heal or help finish this off. Oh, now I'm... Talking. No, I can't talk and fight. Oh, that's, right. <laughs> <laughs> that's, awesome, that's, awesome, that's, awesome. that's right. Okay. I'm in the town. Now, use that opportunity to kill you. Ha ha. So that one no drops. Um, yeah. Drop. Yeah. Communication. Yeah. yeah. Have you guys got any tips for communicating effectively? Oh, things like uh, uh mm. telling your friends, it's, your ally, uh, hey, I'm gonna throw an attack now so they can confirm it, or don't touch if they've got revenge. If your opponent's got revenge and you want to be the one to to to, to kill them before they get. Tags. I have really um, strong opinions on communication, actually, because of oh. decades of MMO PvP. And I think the most important part is know when to shut the fuck up. If you like non stop talk, it's just, like, one of the worst things. Non stop questioning things is something of the. It's, it's the worst. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Something you've mentioned before in the past is yes. If someone... And also, if you decide on something, do it. It's do it, yeah. always better to do something bad than four people doing random things where one might be the best, because yes. it won't work out. In the end, if you learn to listen to your teammates, and even if it's a bad call, then after the match, tell him that. Tell them that. And it was bad. You need to work on that, and that person should probably take it to heart then, and improve. And that is the ultimate goal. But questioning it mid-fight, yelling at somebody, or non-stop talking is some of those are some of the worst things you can do when it comes to communication. I'd absolutely agree with that. Um, it can be helpful if you're 
in a team, you know, if you have a team, a group of friends who regularly play together, to have somebody who you would consider your um, primary shot caller, for example, your team captain, um, that you always listen to. Um, but it's, oh, oh yeah, Jones mentioned it, that's the smart one as well. Um, oh, well, it's a little bit early, from earlier. But yeah, c communicating effectively. It's uh, it's important. It's difficult to do. Um, it yeah, it's more also won't always be perfect, right? Yeah. Not yeah. everybody is in the same mood every single time. Sometimes something will set someone off. And it's just natural. It's just yeah. human interaction, right? And yeah, anyway, well, most people do play just for fun anyway, which is absolutely fine. Yeah. And you should be playing to enjoy yourself. So if you're if you're yelling at your friends who are having a just fun chat about the film they watched awesome. yesterday, to shut up, we're trying to concentrate here. That's not going to be happy for any, not going to be pleasant for anybody. Yeah. Um, so you know, no reason to be a draconian asshole about anything. But it can be a good idea to make sure you have. It's frustrating to 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 mess up or have something bad happen in the game, which could have been easily avoided if you had known about something that you could have been told about. Yeah. Like that's that's always annoying. I like, and I think that's probably something that I I I find interesting. It's like, oh, why didn't you tell me this? I I will ask. Oh, where is where is everybody? Can I leave this point? And then yeah, exactly. That's one of the things that we talked about before when you said don't donate a point. But yeah. if you don't know. How many people are fighting on that other point just because you can't see it? Be that because of stealth or something else blocking your view? Then yeah, it's on just ask for it and have teammates communicate it properly. And then you might, oh, I can leave the point because everybody's engaged. Yeah. I can do something. Or, no, oh, I should wait because somebody might come within the, in the next five seconds. And, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a good idea to offer that information when you can, but it's similarly a. Oh, oh, good no, idea. No, no, if, you, no, 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 no. if you need information, to ask for it um, from your teammates, and you know, listen for your teammates asking questions for what they should do and or what they the information they need, and give it to them as quickly as you can. Um, generally good. Aha! That's <laughs> oh, making making his escape up the ladder. Um, oh yes, this is a. a another point Jones brings up, which is I guess not really related to communicating effectively, but you captured zone a. like we mentioned about how not every fight is a fight to the death, sometimes it's best to escape with your life. Sometimes it's best to not go for the killing blow when you could, and leave opponents unable so if uh, unable to go somewhere and at low health. So if we were in a team fight now, if I was on team fight in mid and I was very low health, my only options would I only had to heal, I'd have to run to C or to A to um, heal up. And if I didn't have any, if uh, there's, you know, ally, if my, if my opponents are stopping those points from being taken, which they should be, then that puts me in a really bad position. So sometimes it's better to leave opponents alive so they have nowhere to go. And basically, they run around a dead man walking, unable to do anything useful for an amount of time. This is particularly useful when they are their team is almost breaking. <coughs> Pardon me. Because, well, some random creature screaming outside. That's right, that was very strange. Um, when they're almost breaking, because then... They have to die before if they if they're low health when they're in breaking, then they have no opportunity to heal or to respawn. So it should be a very easy kill for you to pick off. Um, I think that's a good a good point Jones made. Um, yeah, but it's also something you need to communicate, right? Because yeah. somebody's seeing a flashing emblem, knowing somebody's like low health and having a projectile or something. Oh, I can't finish that guy off. Yeah, I'll let them leave also him communicate that. Yeah, things like Don't I'm going to go for long executions, keep them, keep them dead for as long as possible yeah. into breaking. Yeah, it's another In, thing to communicate. One more thing about communication is that keep it simple. Yeah. Don't go for elaborate explanations of something. Just give clear commands, and that's why you see it in a lot of FPS games, especially ones that play 
I mean, let's just take CSGO. Basically, every corner has a name, right? So, in theory, you can do that in For Honor 2. It just gives something a specific name. But, I mean, we have a lot of, oh, it's C point, mid lane, B point, whatever. It's usually yeah. enough. But Can't if you want a... to go more in depth communications wise, um, um, there is simple. also, we, we also have beacons, don't we? Uh, nobody ever uses those. Um, how was it? Very rarely used. I can't remember the control for them, to be honest. Um, I think it's because I've rebound my controller, but you can. Yeah, uh, I had done Yeah. Well, Nutella is using it right now. I think so I can't see it. All right. You, can, you can place beacons to ping particular parts of the map. Oh, yes, you're on the enemy team. You can't see my beacon. Yeah. And if you oh, just uh, tap the quick check button, you yes, will. Exactly. There's a bomb. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Right, well, you'll 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 say a message, <laughs> but you can also oh, just um, ping for help from your allies, which can be can be handy. Best to um, I tend to see the way people use it to they sp start spamming it when they are really really low health and just about to die, which is obviously not particularly helpful yeah. at all. Um, oh, another thing, they have dead in the middle of a team fight and just keep spamming for the revive. I mean, yeah, give me a which revive. Which is one of the worst spams we can do. Yeah. Because it's yeah, the so sound I guess that's... is annoying. The beacon is potentially covering something on the screen. Yeah, so... try and use quick chat and and things like that effectively. I guess is another one. Don't it can be irritating to have things spammed in 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 chat yeah. even even if it's help. Uh, I, I mean, don't know if yeah, you... like everybody knows you want to help. Everybody knows you yeah. want to fight, but it's not gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, go for it early. Um, shall we try and set up a Dominion match that we can eat at? Um, I'm not sure we have enough players for it, unfortunately, today. We can just go straight on to the um, Breach stuff if we want. Yeah, let's just go straight away. What are you guys feeling? Let's just go straight away. Breach straight away. Yeah. yeah, all right, let's go straight to Breach. Um, I have if idea there's enough people... I'll gather up afterwards. We can still come back to it. Yeah. All right. I've got an idea for this, by the way, Nutella, that Freeze and I should go into Breach and then you could spectate because you could, then it could zoom around the map a little bit. Um, All right. Easier. I think that might be a, potentially a way of doing you it. You can spectate Breach, right? Yep. Yeah, you can spectate Breach, yeah. So it's just tribute you can't? Okay, that one. Uh, yeah, just tribute. Oh, you've got your own charge, so you have set up custom. Yes. Um, uh, yeah, set up without bots and but everything else normal, I think. Not, okay. About the other mode, which is the other popular 44 mode, which is Breach. So I remember back in year one and year two, everybody was asking for a castle siege mode. It was the most, I remember it being the most common request that people asked for. And they, you know, to Dev's credit, I think that was something they always wanted to do. And they did eventually release breach mode which is a castle siege mode um so yeah it's actually quite a popular mode it i think the downfalls of it are how long the maps they can take and it means it can be quite frustrating almost more so than dominion when you have teammates who play really really badly and mess up what can be a 25 minute game um, by behaving in stupid fashion. So, I think it's boring as hell. Who thinks it's boring? I yes, think I, I dislike it's... Breach very much. Fair enough. That's absolutely fair enough. I personally still quite enjoy Breach, um, but it can be very, very frustrating if you have opponents that don't know what they're doing. So we're going to do a quick overview of Breach. Like um, me. <laughs> All right, I'll do a quick overview of Breach. Freeze can jump in and say, "Sure, this isn't a thing." Um, any point he wants. And just we're just just a completion because I I don't think we need to give a tribute um lowdown. But no, Breach that mode died since after they removed the revives being fifty percent because yeah. there is no heal point there. You're stuck okay. without health yeah. and respawn yeah. time for way too long. Tribute is just a mode left in the dust and. Yeah, like you said, too many changes affected that mode in a negative way. Yeah, so tribute is uh, other modes are bad for tribute, basically. Yeah, and you will, you will, if you go to look for Q for tribute modes, you will never find one. Um, I don't think 
anybody plays it. Like I, I can't. It's been I think it's been years since I've managed to find a match of tribute. But Breach is alive, and if you do want to play Breach, you can find matches of Breach. So, how does Breach work? Well, when the map loads up, I will be able to tell you. Um, but it is a castle siege mode. You have one team which is the attackers and one team which is the defenders. And I can't remember which team I'm on. The um, attacker. I am the attackers. Okay. So, quick super. Quick overview of Breach. You have three phases in Breach. First, you have to get, as the attackers, well, as attackers, you have to get your ram in there through. Oh, yeah. Well, let us know when you can spectate, by the way, and tell her, and then you can. Um... Yep. I'm actually able to now. All right. But yeah, you have three uh, different stages outer, inner, and commander is there. So you have to get your ram through the first gate, and then your ram through the second gate, and then you have to kill the commander, who is the um, the big big dude in the, in in the middle of the castle, um, or kill the king, as it's often known. So you have as the attackers. It was king have... actually in the very first test, right? It was, I think, a king originally, and they have they have king. round on so. Uh, Ram, your the ram is a little bit like payload in things like um, TF2 and Overwatch. It, you have, whilst you're near it, you can make it move forward. Um, if you're, you have, as you can see, the minions in breach are. We're, we're not actually like, in for the year, so hold on. Yeah, yeah it's gonna be really delayed, anyways. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the that's, spectating is. That's a good point. Um, yeah, I'll probably. Just have to talk over uh, things. Yeah, spe 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 from uh, from like current position, I yeah, guess, in that case. But it'll still be a delay. Oh, yeah, right. That's the thing. Oh, it'll yeah, still be a delay right. even then. Oh, yeah, yeah, but it's a couple of seconds, just yeah, like just 10 seconds or something. So you have your RAM. Let, let us know when you're in when you're in the overview. Mm, yep. Yeah. Will do. You went bankrupt. Oh, right. Nine first from the beginning. We don't want to act. Unlucky. I mean, you could dip out and go from front if you want to. Yeah, um, yeah I think it might be, might be easiest. Um, anyway, so you have your ram that moves forward. It has a, a certain amount of health. If your ram is killed, if the ram loses all its health before it reaches the... You break through the second gate, You, you as attackers, you lose. If you kill the commander, you win. Uh, if, as when you get to the attackers, the final phase, you exhaust all the attackers, the attackers start having limited revives, they have tickets, and if those are all exhausted, the defenders win as well. And the amount of tickets you get when you reach the final phase is dependent on the amount of health that the ram has when it gets through the last, uh, the, la the second gate. Um... Let, let us know when you're when you're through, Natal. Mm -hmm. I've I know I've said that repeatedly, but um Move. We're stopping the run. <laughs> oh yeah. Wait, so... your fucking minions took phase what really? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. unlike TF two and Overwatch you don't have to move the ram all by yourself. Your minions will push it forward. Though the issue of that is the archer lanes will be firing arrows at your minions and killing them. So yeah. that's why you do want to take the ar archer lane. So your minions can push the payload themselves. Because Absolutely. you can actually boost yeah. your minions once there is no enemy minion around to move it much faster. But if you don't have any minions there and no players there, the ram just completely halts. All right, I'm in. Yeah, let me uh, let me stop that. Okay, so we we can see that the in breach the minions have more. They have multiple health points. They don't just um. Oh, freeze! If you freeze leaves this this area, then I'll be able to show the the ram. Oh, you will on quick uh, speed. I can already. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you so can see push. the ram now moves significantly faster now that there are no opponents near it. It's, now uh, I see. Yeah, oh, ram is now full speed. In, and, then, and my, my ram will stop singing oh, and the speed will go down a lot. If I leave, because Freeze is molarizing me, or he kills me, uh, you can see my ram is now stopped, um, and the opponent's pikemen will be able to surround it and start doing damage to the ram. 
And so basically, yeah, basically that's how uh, the Ram's health goes down is by the enemy, the defender sh pikemen poking them and uh, poking it. And also, if it stops underneath the gates, there is a cauldron up there, which Freeze can use and it can use now. Yeah, whilst, whilst it's stalled, and, and it will do um, quite a significant chunk of damage to the Ram. Uh, I think about. It's about an eighth of an eighth of its health, I think. It's like, no, like, is it that much? Uh, a tenth of it. It's, I don't know. Well, you're, we're, on three, we're on three quarters now. It's enough to completely remove the shield in one go. Yeah. Oh no, it's almost an almost an eighth there. So it's about a tenth of the tenth of the ram's health. Um, as you can see, my pikeman spawned all the way down here at the boat, and they have to run all the way up to the. the the ram to start it moving all the while it's being poked by Frieza's pikemen and the archers who are on the ramparts will be shooting them constantly and they do the archers actually do quite a lot of damage to the, the minions and essentially and let, if you haven't if your ram is at the this is what we've done now is that basically what exactly what not, what not to do what I was demonstrating but if your ram is at the gate and isn't moving and you haven't got the ramparts, then you will not be able to... Uh, your pike will just not be able to move it. Um, they will get shot up by the by the archers and die before they reach it. So you need, as an attacker, you need to make sure you either have somebody who's by, able to be by the ram all the time, which is difficult seeing as the only place for healing in Breach is with feats, executions, or over in the healing zone, which there are, of which there is one per phase. So in this phase, it's down um, just below the first archer point. And in the next phase, it's somewhere else um, in like a jail or something. Um, but once you have captured the the archer points as an attacker, your archers will... It's permanently, your, permanently there, yours. Um, your archers will come in and start shooting the enemy pikemen instead. Which can basically allow your pikemen to get up to the ram without being completely shot to pieces. So personally, I think the the archer point is the higher priority for the attackers and the ram because the further the ram moves up without the, having the archer points available, the harder it is for pikemen to get there to to push it forwards. The longer it will stay stationary in front of the objectives and when it's stationed in front of the objectives that's when it's taking damage um oh what a shot um yeah. <laughs> so, she had three, there were things just to demonstrated, note yeah. demonstrated another aspect of breach maps which there is a baluster there's breach is one of these things there are a lot of moving parts and this is yeah. why a lot of players play quite badly because there's a lot to consider and even whilst when you get down to it, it's quite there actually are quite um, hierarchical priorities that you have to come with you. To I mean, come with me. I mean, oh, the I'm issue sure, yeah. with breach, especially, and what people understand is attackers have the play here. Attackers basically determine what happens in the map. If the attackers are just going to push the ram, you need to stop them from pushing the ram. If they're going to all just push the ram parts, you need to stop them from doing that. You basically, as defenders, need to react to the attackers because you can't win without just slowing them down. So whatever they're doing, yeah. slow down it so they don't do it as fast. That's just the yes. Um, I guess the way you can another way you can think about this in breach Clap is that down. the attackers, uh, the defenders, win by default. If if the attackers do nothing, the defenders will win. Um, you will, the pikemen will. Your your defenders will. The attackers will get through the first gate and they'll get up to the second gate, but they won't get. They won't be able to get through. Put it in Spaniard. Put it in. Okay. So. Um, oh yeah, because I probably need it to stop my ram from broke, dying and then stopping us from. Um... Right now, I'm demonstrating slightly ahead of schedule. One of the other complicating aspects of breach, which is, um... there we go, is something called the sh the, the banner the, or the the offering which spawns at 23 minutes at the, after the beginning of each phase. And 
uh, you can be used to give your ram one little pip of health. It's about an eighth, and it gives, but it gives the rampart, the gate, sorry, uh, an, a full extra third of health. So the what well, I was talking about how um, the defenders, your objectives are stopping the attackers, pretty much, and it's kind of reactionary, and you ha and the attackers set the pace. That the the one exception to that is the banner, which really uh, that is the, a, a primary objective. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone Often. wants it because it gives them much more time. For the attackers, it means they don't lose vital tickets. For the defenders, it means they get one extra hit of the ram to stall out and get more tickets off the attackers. Yeah. So it's really the attackers, your use of the banner is to deny it from the defenders because it's way more valuable for the defenders than it is for the attackers. Um, so uh, we've talked a lot about the, how the attackers really set the pace of the game. A breach, something that, that you will notice um, is that, especially when you're just starting off, Low low level players or new players, breach is very defender sided when you're starting. The further you get through the game, you will find that breach becomes very attacker sided, and this is because of the aforementioned way that the defenders uh, have to play reacting to the attackers who set the pace of the game. So, um, yeah, I lost my train of thought. Yeah, Sorry about that. Um, it's so... on the oh, okay. It's on the attackers yeah. basically. The better the attackers play, the easier it is for them yeah. to win. Because and initially, attacker. Yeah, yeah. Because initially, defenders will always win if the attackers are really bad. Literally, yeah. if you don't do anything as defenders, yeah. it, uh, as attackers, the defenders will just win. That's just yeah, how it really works. Bad. Yeah. So, because of that initial, like, basic imbalance that the mode always has, it ends up being the actions of the attackers are more important than the, attack the actions of the defenders, which means that, well, it, you know, it becomes very attacker-sided. Um, this higher, was actually when, something when that they're... changed as well, because there used to be tickets for the defenders, and the defenders' goal back in the day was just to kill all the attackers, constantly. Yeah. But now that the ticket system is gone, apart from the third phase, there is no sure real need to do anything as a defender that isn't just stall the attacker. You don't need kills in this game mode as a defender. Until the very end, obviously. Yep. Uh, but otherwise, you could literally go the whole game without killing a single attacker. And that would probably be just as good as anything else. Because as you notice, the breach maps are much larger than the minion maps, and um, yep. that's a and lot of space. To, yeah, that's longer respawn times, and there's much more dead space with no healing. Because there is one healing point, and it's like a dominion point. You have to capture it. It's not. Oh, we yeah. could say that actually. Well, when if we... you will see a lot of fighting on that yeah. point. And well, that is definitely... the worst thing for You're both teams. Not only not for both teams, I guess for the defender, it's nice. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm going, you have I'm one left, man. You're jumping ahead. <laughs> oh, I'm jumping ahead. My, my bad, my bad. No, it's all Did right. Did I not it's read it. the curriculum? You okay. haven't read the curriculum, Freeze. What, what kind of teacher? Um, or your teacher evaluation um, will be will uh, be fraught. Um, I guess we should mention a few other things that Breach has. Breach has pickup buffs not dotted around the place. These are handy to have. There's an attack buff, there's a uh, defense buff, or it's a shield, and there's a speed buff, um, which it, they're all useful to have. They're not, they tend not to be like super important objectives, but they definitely, you definitely want them. Um, another the aspect that the second phase of the breach has, as well as having a, a banner, is over here. Is he? Oh, he is here now. This, uh, this is the guardian. The Guardian is the only neutral NPC in the game. Um, he is neither an attacker nor a defender. He just sits here being a giant big fellow. And the team that kills him um, gets a, a strong buff, which gives them infinite stamina and allows them to kill Pikeman in a single hit. So it seems like the Guardian is quite important. Is However... It? I am telling you now, the Guardian is a trap for the inexperienced. 
No. Um, because nice. what you really do in an actual bridge game is you let the enemy team farm it, wasting their time while you get the rest of the map, and then you get the last hit. Because that's all that matters, the last hit. And you've got the buff now. Just did, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But even so, if you but even if you don't, like the the Guardian is still a trap. Yeah. Every, all the time that you are fighting the Guardian is time you are not playing the objective, which is defending the defending the pushing the ram or capturing the um capturing the, the uh yeah. It does make playing the objective cards. easier, but not that much easier to make up for the fact that you probably wasted two minutes doing it. Yeah. yeah. And and it's even worse, if we go back to if we were talking about like common mistakes, it's even worse to go just on your own to kill the the Guardian. Yeah. Unlike all of the other objectives in the map, you can do the the which you can do as a solo player, it, it doesn't make it any faster, me capturing this point with one person or two. But killing the Guardian only gives the buff to your teammates who are in the region of the Guardian. So it's it's really, really bad to go there on your own because it'll take longer to kill the Guardian and the reward for doing it is a pittance. And that is definitely... Uh, uh, Freeze was right about... He can jump ahead, it doesn't really matter. Um, but the only times that you're really... Uh, yeah, you don't be fighting over the, the you don't fight over the, the healing zone. But the other big mistake people I see is is having one person go to the guardian when they really really shouldn't. And um, I guess that's another thing to, to go go only go to the guardian. <laughs> the best time to go to the guardian is when all of the your opponents are dead, and not before then. Yeah, and you um, go together as a team and really yeah. just. Nuke him down die. within like 15, 20 uh, seconds. I think you can let, let the ram go forward because um, otherwise he'll oh, die sure, before sure. getting to uh, getting through to the commander phase, which you want to see. Um, All right, we want. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, a Watch point to make about the commander as well, uh, the guardian. You may want to just run in to steal the last hit. That's probably a good idea to make the entire enemy idea, team yeah. to waste that time they spent there. But ultimately, yeah. it doesn't really matter if they get the buff because it usually the buff usually lands once the ram is right about here, right about to buck. And at that point, the pikemen don't really matter, the one shot. And all you get then is infinite stamina for two minutes. And stamina right now yeah. is kind of imbalanced to the point where you really shouldn't be running out of stamina. So, yeah. yeah. It's not really a great buff. You also get a shield that lasts for two minutes. But yeah. I think it lasts, uh, you know, infinitely until it's run out. The it? shield. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've still got my run out. Oh, the, not, the, no, 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 not the Guardian one. The pickup one. The Guardian one is... No, no the Guardian one's on anymore. right now. He doesn't want the buff anymore. He's fine. Oh, oh, is it still on? Yeah. The other shield as well, to be fair. Oh, yeah, you um, picked up the other one. Oh, yeah, you might have that one still on, right? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. Yeah, we don't play the mode that much because... Yeah. Well, it's, uh, yeah, but they also changed it. Yeah, the shield buff in this game are uh, unlike in elimination, but you don't play elimination anyways. Um, yeah, put it in. Yeah. Uh, the the uh, offering which Freezer's come and kindly donated to me um, is removed if if uh, you drop it if you get if you take any damage or if you get counter guard broken. Any sort of hit yeah. stone. Any kind of hit stone will remove it. So if you're hyper armored, um, you won't drop it. So yes, that's true. Um, Juggernaut and uh, Juggernaut and uh, well, let you keep it forever, which oh, is kind of funny. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can't run with it, so it's less useful. Um, I suppose uninterruptible has become a decent feat at that point, but you'll yeah, still get melted uh, for trying to put it in. Uh, Shaman, Shaman's uh, teleport feat is very, very strong with in breach, it allows you to. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Shaolin, not Shaman. I guess he's a yeah. Spanish Shaman. Um, Spanish Shaman? What, what am I on about? Sorry. It's quite late. Um, I'm not doing very well today. Uh, other things about Breach. Um, okay, so other... We're going to go on to, like, sort of mistakes that people make in, in Breach. Common mistakes. So we've... We talked about fighting over the... Well, we talked about the, the Guardian. Uh, another big mistake is... Fighting over the healing zone, um, which if you the healing zone it heals you, that's good. It's nice to have health, but if it doesn't do anything else, 
So if you come into healing zone and you and then you have opponents coming there and you just want to fight over it, you're just wasting time doing this. So fighting over the healing zone is a really a massive waste of time in this in this game mode. Um, so be wary of like piling in repeatedly to uh, he healing zone fights because there's they, no benefit they just, to it. Yeah, there's really no benefit to it. Um, well, there's a benefit as a defender. If the attackers keep doing it, that's oh, great for you yeah. guys. But... Yeah, if the, if the attackers keep doing it, um, then yeah, or by all means go in and waste their time because as a defender you are trying to waste the attacker's time. Um, sorry, freezes freezes one v oneing me and killing me. Um, but as you can see now, when he kills me, the little counter above my the attacker bar goes down. Um, when I well when I respawn, um, it will cost me one ticket. And when freeze kills me, yep. my team enough times to run out of tickets. In this we phase, will. You really want to execute just so the attackers cannot reclaim tickets. Yeah. Because they only lose ticket for respawning, not for dying. And yes. respawning actual spawn, not getting revived. Yes, yeah. uh, which also yeah, means it. if you're the one with the last ticket. At if, the you're end. The, if you're the one with the last ticket, do not respawn instantly. You should wait until your entire team dies because your one respawn will respawn everyone else who is dead. Exactly. So you want yeah. to make sure your entire team is dead. When you have one ticket left, and that one last ticket will respawn all four of you. So it will send your team into breaking like in Dominion. In Dominion, that also is a mechanic. Everyone who is dead will instantly get respawned. Yeah, so I guess that's the point. When we, when we, run, out yeah. of, when we, run, when we run out of tickets, we run out of respawns. We don't run out. We don't immediately die and lose. We run out of respawns. So, yeah. Um, they enter breaking. Yeah, that's uh, something definitely. Uh, other mistakes we can still do. Um, I want to mention how, how bad it is to push the ram early. Um, as we've seen, if you push the ram early and you don't let it get, um, if you just. Well, the ram we've seen it in phase one. I mean, pushing the ram early is entirely dependent on your character, dependent on the enemy team, and dependent on your team. Because if you I mean, are well, someone like Aramusha, you can definitely push the ram and get it to the end. Very quickly, you just need yeah, to really hope that your team can stall ramparts at least, or get the first one. I mean, the I say the worst, the worst place for the ram to be is to be stopped underneath the gate because then it's yeah. You do not want the ram to ever be stopped to be in truth, but under the gate, the cauldron will wreck it. Uh, yeah, well, you don't want to be anywhere, but that's the absolute worst place for it to be stopped. So I would yeah. honestly consider pushing, especially for newer players who don't have like a very efficient team. Um, pushing the ram early is a mistake. Push the ram as far as the ramparts and don't really push further than that until you know you're gonna. It's not gonna get stopped. Yeah. More skilled um, teams can probably get away with pushing it, and it's probably even better for them because they save on ram HP because they got it to the end faster. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that is a very high risk strategy because if you do die, your ram is not gonna sit there still without anyone. Yeah. Because your pikemen yeah. yeah. will get sorted by the time they reach the ram. Another um, mistake is ignoring the banner that, uh, especially overextending just before it is ready to spawn. Um, you don't want to do that. You don't want to. If your opponents are ignoring the banner and you are playing the attackers, sometimes it's a good idea to not go and grab it because they're still fighting all. They're all fighting over the. Uh, the healing point and you want to keep them off you want to keep them occupied um or well, they're fighting somewhere useless so that uh, another place you don't want to ignore though in the commander phase is the baluster which is here um when you've got the once you've taken the archer point as an attacker in the commander phase the c commander will tend to will tend to want to walk forward to kill the pikeman um and when he does that he'll put he will put himself in range of the baluster which does an enormous amount of damage to the commander so this does 60 damage per shot and it also is me. affected by damage buffs so if i pick up the attack buff on the other side of the map um when is he gonna go and fight those minions once his pikemen are dead he will once his pikemen are dead okay 
And the the commander okay. will clear enemy minions when they're close or when the pikemen are dead. And you can see uh, how much damage just that one shot did on him. I missed the other one because I'm terrible. So the ba ignoring the Barster in the commander phase is another big yeah. mistake that defenders do. The opposite of that as attackers is going one by one into the commander. Um, yeah. Which is another terrible idea, especially if you don't have pikemen or the archer point to back you up. Then you end up being, well, all it needs is for you, for one of the the commander does massive damage on his huge swings, and all you need is to have your opponent confirm the top unblockable for for him, but like that, it does sixty damage, knocks me over, oh, forty eight damage, knocks me over, and allows you know more damage to be landed. So you've got to be really careful running into the commander on your own as an attacker because you're very likely to die without you doing much damage to the commander himself which is something you want to be doing yeah and the, you're not really going to get revived underneath the commander yeah no, you're not, and not. Getting revived by the <laughs> just uh, on so, top of that uh just to roll back to ballista it's useful in this phase in phase two and one it's practically worthless and not worth your time to go for yeah. yeah, it's um, like boost in one point, but yeah, like because, all the game, but you're not getting yeah, anything out of it. Ballista, you're basically just sitting at a, at a spot and doing nothing. Yeah. Yeah. With Ballista especially, if you get hit in the back while on it, you will take 100% more damage. And that does yeah. back with defense debuffs and damage buffs. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, That is a yeah, hard-coded sure. thing. So if you're in a Ballista, you will probably eat 60 damage if you are not paying attention to people behind you. Yeah, so what is the best strat to deal with players guarding the commander? Well, as attackers, if you can coordinate it, make sure you're all grouped together. Make sure you've got the... If they're guarding the commander, they'll be leaving the archer point alone. So make sure you've got the archer point, because that allows your pikeman to go up further. And then you want to send one person to the baluster to start shooting the, the, the commander and the opponents. And that will basically force... <laughs> The, opponent, the defenders to break up, to split up. There's no if they le if they just let the commander sit here in line with Alistair, he is going to be absolutely chunked. So the best way to break up the defenders is to go and pressure the baluster. Um, and once you do that, you can even sometimes faint essentially by by sending off two people to the baluster, have the defenders all run over there, and then the rest of you bum rush the commander. Another thing that's really good to do is obviously use feats on the commander. Um, but I'll tell and, one more thing. Just engage with your pikemen. Don't run into yeah. the pikemen and the commander together. Even if you're together, the pikemen do so much damage to you. And, they, so. and, the, and the commander ignores you whilst there are pikemen. So you can get full damage yeah. on him. Oh my god. How did he get that far? Jesus. Yeah, the top attack is really good. Another thing you can do once once you've got the commander to go out from as far away, like, out to, to here. <laughs> wow. Yeah, he will want to go back. So now I can just wail on him, and he's not going to really attack me very much. Well, I said that. <laughs> he's going to... Get... Oh, God, now he's got double... He's got... Well, okay, if he gets he gets too far away, he just gets revenge for free. Yeah. Um, so that's you don't, you don't want to ever lure the commander out too far uh, to try and ledge him or something. He gets hey, revenge. doing it right it's, now. Look at him. Popping it's, revenge. It's, yeah, it's the same with the Guardian. They will get revenge infinitely if they are not inside their designated zone. So you do not want yeah. to get them too far out. Right, yeah. You can ledge them, though, which is or at least on the sam samurai map, which is kind of hilarious. Yes, you can. Yeah, the samurai map the has a ledge on, like, around this area, which is really, really just yeah. not good. I, wonder, the... I mean, there's a ledge over here. If I wonder you, if from the commander, area. it's the left pond, isn't it? Yeah, uh, it, it, it's next to the commander's pond. The, the zip line goes yeah, over it. I mean, in realistically, ledging the commander basically never happens, but it is quite funny when it does. Yeah. Um, another thing to mention that is a common annoyance people people do in, in Breach is um, stealing the, your other than ex, other than he, the healing zone the other the only way you can get health is from executions and as you may have noticed on the um, ramparts there are these irritating fellows called officers who run around and they're, they are essentially portable healing zones yeah they're uh, health batteries they're little health batteries they're not very hard to kill and executing them lets you execute. So, if you can, you always want to execute the um, 
Yeah. Uh, let the lowest person oh. get the execution. Yeah. So let the lowest person get the execution. Um, don't steal the execution from your allies if you can help it. Good flip. Um, good flip. Yeah, it was a great flip. I know. <laughs> Um, what other things are, are there? I think I think I think that's all the common mistakes we've made. Um, we've covered at least all the ones I wanted to mention. Um, yeah, re breach is a weird one. Personally, I think it can be quite fun. Um, I mean, obviously it can be, but I mean, breach is definitely a mode where it can you do it? Can he do it? Can he win it, or will the time run out? Oh no, I can't. There we go. It like. The, the breach is one of these weird modes because, unlike, you can be losing a breach and still somehow manage to hold on and and eke out a victory, um, snatch it from the jaws of defeat, and it can be quite hard to see it coming, so that can be quite fun. Um, but, yeah. Don't make those common mistakes, and you should be fine, or at least a less annoying teammate um, to your opponents um how the commanders 60 damage off target lights we mentioned do very wear him out um no they haven't but yes the commander when he's attacking pikeman has a massive damage buff and that damage buff can apply to you if you get in his way so he, he one shots pikeman and his lights will do the same amount of damage to you so they do 60 damage uh be careful essentially if the commander is you're fighting the commander in your own pikeman in case he can like really rinse you um if you get externally hit by his lights that will be 60 damage yeah um yeah. to the best strat to really deal with him as well if you're not playing wallmonger because she kind of has her feet line up kind of simplify the process it just isolates the commander and then you get to whale number three otherwise you want to go in as yeah. a full team with feet around and just constantly barrage the enemy team you don't want to focus the commander only, but you don't want to let him throw attacks because he has the most dangerous attack of them all, something that knocks you down and does 48 yeah. fucking damage, which is huge. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And it's really easy to GB4. Like, even people who don't GB4 ganks normally, they will usually GB4 the commander because it is just so easy, obvious, and it gives so much damage. Yeah. yeah. Um. You you do you make a good point of Warmonger being basically, if you, Warmonger is suited for this Warmonger game. Is mode. A man, it just absolutely destroys in this game mode. Is yeah. easily the best character in it because her corruption feats can be applied to, um, yeah, freaking officers as well as the commander. Yeah. So well, likewise, the yeah. Wu Lin from Marching Fire, their kit was all initially made for this game mode, so all their feats and such. So JJ with uh, his fiery barrage and like his unique feats, Tiandi's survivability, which is really good because you don't really get much health in this game mode. Nusha's Caltrops one shot Pikeman, and uh, Shaolin yeah. gets to literally teleport around with a banner on his back. Yeah. So uh, the, these four characters that... are really good picks usually in this game mode, along with Warmonger, who's infection. And... Absolutely. Really good. Uh, and there's one more character who is um, very very strong. On the attackers, which is Hitakiri for the Hitakiri's tier four. We didn't mention, but the commanders has certain amount of damage reduction against uh, feats. So if yep. you throw a catapult on him, it's not going to do as much damage as it would do on a player. That does not apply to Hitakiri's tier four, which does yep. about a third of the commander's health. So in a I would hit. honestly uh, say that it's more beneficial that, to play as Iron Wish of Juggernaut Fear itself and just run in there with both activated. Just keep sight heavy chaining infinitely. That's probably more damage than yeah. Uh, I mean, Juggernaut and no. Fear itself. Basically, getting an attack buff and a defense debuff, you get to melt the commander really easily. Having yeah, Juggernaut, you, up, you get to ignore everyone else. Yeah. If you yeah. take, if you take, um, I mean, if you have your one of your friends pick, uh, um, okay. If you, I guess the ultimate commander killing, uh, combination is an Aramusha with Fear itself and Juggernaut. Warmonger with corruption to keep people off him, and Hitakiri with uh, picking up the damage buff, and then you will be able to kill the commander in seconds flat. In fact, Hitakiri with damage with the da with the breach damage buff and fear itself does about seventy five percent of the of the commander's yep. health in a single hit. It's it's hilarious, um, mm -hmm. and I have seen like tw 
like total 20 second like from the beginning of phase three to the commander dying 20 yeah. seconds or less uh zerk um, too because he has to buff himself of fury yeah. and fear itself also um, fair. yes you can play supportive to the commander you can heal him with feats like champion's aura or griffin's entire suite um, but he does have a tendency to walk out of the yeah, way. Yeah. Um. So unless you're using something like Champion's Aura, which is mobile and based on you, uh, for the most part, he will walk around and kill Pikeman. He will usually walk out of the range of your healing banner. So in reality, it's not so feasible unless you have Champion's Aura, which Griffin does have. Griffin is one of the few defending characters who uh, can consistently get heals on the character, wonder, uh, and BP can give him brief immortality with Umbral Shelter. Okay, and um, I guess I want to do one last thing, which isn't related to breach, but is uh, something you will feet will uh, people will find confusing in team modes in matchmaking is our perks. So I'm gonna qu I want a oh, quick okay. whip stop of perks. Um, basically, when you play matches, you get gear which um, goes into your inventory, and you can equip them to your character, and they have mysterious little symbols on them which give you points towards perks. Um, and perks are little buffs that you are, tend to be passive t things that you get. Um, but some of them are really powerful. Some of them are really weak. Some of them are completely useless. The Info Hub is a really good resource to finding out which perks you can get and which perk combinations you can get. Um, until if you open up one of your, one of your loadouts and show, show what perks are like. You need to get 600 points towards each perk in order to unlock the perk's use. And your gear will provide certain amounts towards that. Depending on how strong your gear is, which depends on how many reps you have on that character, determines the maximum amount of points that you can get. And essentially, if you optimize everything, you can get three perks. There are certain combinations you can't get. So you can't get three of the you can't get the, the last three perks together, for example. Um, but yeah, bearing that in mind, if you see like random little symbols, you don't know what's going on. They're probably perks. Um, when you get to rep eight and you start getting all the 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 green gear, you can start building perk combinations, of which most are fairly unimpressive. But there are a couple which are very, 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 very strong. Um, yeah. And Tyler is highlighted yeah. now. Basically, if you've got the heavy perks, yeah. they are amazing. So uh, the one which is a little castle there, that's Bastion, which is just generically useful. It gives you 10% damage reduction in any zone. So that that's means also around near, the RAM as well. Around the RAM, in a capture zone, in... Dominion, and a um, zone, on the healing zone. It's, it's just really good. A generic, useful. Vengeful Barrier is by far and away the most broken perk in the game because it gives you a 25 health shield when you leave Revenge, which lasts for 15 seconds, which except track? it can trigger a Venge bug, which um, means you exit Revenge with a full shield if you get it. Yeah, you maintain the shield from your Revenge mode, which, yeah, it, yeah that's a bug that is around and Will probably be around for a while. Yeah. Last stand. Uh, last stand. That one yeah. there gives you forty percent damage reduction when you are below twenty five health, which can basically turn a heavy attack into a light attack. So that's incredibly powerful as well. Personally, I think bulk up, which is the other option, is a little bit more potentially more powerful because it gives you up to sixteen extra health. Yeah. Whereas last stand can give you only effective ten extra health unless you have shields on top of it. But um, and there is a difference bit, where bulk up, you have to you have to basically tend to that help. You have to heal for longer. Last stand, you don't. It works better with shields. And last stand yes. also has the little caveat of a mind game on the opponent. Most opponents <laughs> yeah. won't really see your health while being low and think, oh yeah, he's got last stand, my heavy won't kill. They'll go, my heavy will kill, I'll not chain. And then you, they basically sacrifice frame advantage. At that yeah. point, they throw a heavy at you, they think you're dead. You're not dead. Now you also have frame advantage, and you can probably do a, quite a bit of damage on them. Yeah. Um, um, the only other perk I want to mention, which is, I mean, are really good, are the two, some in assist perks. There's Remedy, fresh. which gives you 10 health for every kill, which is just useful. Yeah. And there's finally, there's um, one called 
radiant. No, it's not Reba radiant. Radiant it's rebound is one as well. Radiant is... rebound is useful. Just gets you into into the comp in gives you movement speed yeah. boost at the beginning of the match. And rapid and refresh. Being... And rapid refresh is the one I really want to mention, which is on a few characters which have very strong feet loadouts, and it allows you to every time you get a takedown or a re uh, re uh, revive somebody, you get time taken off the cooldown which allows you to have much much more rapid use of those feats and so that's a really really good one on griffin in particular griffin and uh, bushi also has it so it's, they're really good um the extra health and dark point of engine yes it does you will still gain well you gain the yeah that's what I say. it gives you the you still gain revenge as if you were your base health but it allows you to have more health in order to gain revenge so that's pretty good um Perks, yeah, mostly are kind of you can ignore them until you've gone quite far into the game. Um, but yeah, check the info hub for combinations of them, which are good. And I think that is really we've covered like a. I want to say we've we've covered everything. <laughs> uh, we always we cover covered everything. We never we leave are. anything out. We never miss anything. So it's yeah. the best info here. Oh yeah, we are, yeah absolutely. Um, I guess I I would want to continue to say like, always remember carry on learning um and enjoy learning the game a big part of it is enjoying improving um find goals to set practice goals so you can carry on that keep a good mindset um and then if you can when you're playing team modes play with a group or play with a group of friends it's just way more fun um and if you don't have a group of friends who play the game already there are places to find them so come to the dojo where you can look for people there the main reddit's um discord server has a lot of people there you can do things like sign up for tournaments and meet people who who are interested in, in tournament tournaments and make a team and scrim with them and play i think that's always good fun um and yeah that was that's all i've got for, for it um i'm sure we'll think of other things sorry that it's always been a bit disjointed but that is how we we do things here um that's just thank you very much for watching um anything else you guys want to say no well, good. Um, that'll be it. So we're wrapping up the stream there. Thank you all for watching. And we will be back. We will be back next week. Instead of the dojo, we've got the there is a yeah. to the fray tournaments, which will be running every weekend, every day for the next month. And we will be streaming them. I think we might be on the main Twitch for our channel, but we might will be streaming. Will be hosted from here. So you'll be able to come and... Oh, yeah, sorry. We haven't really had time to do the scrims because it's like been two, two hours. We talked a lot. I'm sorry. Um, there will be other times we can do scrims. We can give you some coaching and stuff. Uh, but, yes, tournament's coming coming next week and for the whole month. It's going to be fun. And if you want to participate in the tournaments, I highly recommend it because they will. there's a unique outfit you can get just of taking part. There are cash prizes. There's steel prizes for the amateurs. They're on every platform. Um, Check there if you go to the dojo. I might put a link in the channel there in the tournaments, the announcements channels. There'll be links to the Into the Phrase server and how to sign up for the tournaments and how to find teammates if you haven't already got a team to play with. So, yeah, tournament time. It's going to be fun. You can put your newfound knowledge to the test. And yeah, see you all then, I guess. Yep. Bye. Bye bye. Take care.